Hey guys, it's Tharpian here for the long-awaited farming guide. So what we're going to start with is an explanation of the tools that are involved in doing this activity. So when you start farming, uh, or when you are farming, you can wear a farming hat, which will boost your farming level plus one. You can also wear a watering can, which will increase the growth speed of trees and crops by 20%. It's not fantastic. Um, there's actually a new farming offhand from the Goblin Village. I don't remember what it's called, but this will give you some plus farming. So that's actually the offhand you want. Unfortunately, I don't have it, so I'm just going to wear the watering can. It's not really useful except in a couple scenarios where I will tell you. You can also uh, have a draw knife or a knife in order to do some uh, co-fletching, which I'll tell you about later. Did I just... Okay, I didn't think so. All right. Uh, you will may need a weapon in order just to have with you uh, in case you want to kill anything on your way or around and then you have your farming tools so the farming tools that i'll be using are the obsidian scythe uh, with the mod sickle studded edge and serrate studded grip and serrated edge each of which give additional farming whatever that number is farming number uh, we have the steel shears uh, these have a mod called spring loaded on them which gives more farming number and you can also put a studded grip on them, but I don't really want to because I don't think it's worth it. Then you also have the fruit picker with the Bonanza mod. Generally speaking, if you're going for XP, the fruit picker is not going to be your top choice, except for in one scenario, which I'll tell you about. And the farming gloves, which you will need in order to farm things. So I was thinking about different ways to do this farming guide, and I figured the best way to do it would actually just be to go through all the things that are farmable and let you know, A, where to find it, B, what do you do with it? And C, do I think it's worth farming? All right, guys, um, so let's get started. All right, so let's say we're starting at level one farming. The first thing that I would recommend farming is apples. Now, the reason for this is that apples give eight XP each and have a fixed amount of time that it takes to harvest them. You can't actually use the fruit picker yet because it requires level 20 farming, um, but you know, if you're farming apples for any other reason, you should use the fruit picker. And the way, place where you find them is right here, just outside of work Molo. There's two apple trees. You can just go back and forth. This is a great way to start off farming and gain your first few levels. Um, now, what can you do with apples? You can bake them into apple pie. You can use them to make apple juice, or you can just sell them to the general store or one of the fruit stores around the world. But if you're just starting farming, I would recommend you either keep them or just sell them to the general store. It's not really, you won't be here long and you won't get a lot of apples. So that's it for apples. I will see you at the next thing. Next up is wheat. Uh, you can farm wheat just north of Wharf Molo again, and just in these wheat fields, and you would just farm it. Now make sure you have your sound on so you can get these clickables. They'll significantly increase the amount you can get. But generally speaking, um, at level one, you unlock the ability to farm wheat and you can farm wheat. But as I recommended before, you can farm apples. So uh, what do you do with wheat? Wheat, you can take over to the mill over there and turn it into flour for some cooking XP. I wouldn't necessarily recommend you do this, but that is what you can do with it. And I honestly would not recommend farming wheat unless you really don't like apples, because I think the apples will be faster because they have a fixed rate, whereas these will increase based on how much uh, farming number you have. Next up we have lettuce which is in this field here owned by the farmer Gregory uh, with the pigs near in Wharf Molo. You need to be able to do the magic composter quest in order to unlock the ability to farm lettuce. Um, so you will need actually let it level three and the magic compost quest complete to farm this. Uh, you will also need the magic compost quest complete to farm tomatoes. These are the uh, well they're technically the only ones with quest requirements, but some of these items are only available in places that are quest locked. And I'll let you know about those as we get there. But at level three, you can farm lettuce and lettuce is here in this field, same as the wheat, you just farm it, make sure your sound is on for clickables. I do not recommend farming lettuce unless you have to. The only thing you can do with lettuce is turn it into codfish sandwiches, which are useful for the Wharf Molo tier three adventures. You can also use, I think one or two to buy the small backpack. Other than that, it's not really great. I don't recommend farming it. Next up, we have potatoes. Potatoes unlock at level four. There's nothing special about potatoes. They're just another crop. Um, for these potatoes, my, uh, what you can do with them is you can turn them into baked potatoes over at the uh, baker over there. I wouldn't recommend doing that because there are better ways to train your cooking. 
I would probably just drop these potatoes right on the spot unless you really want some money, in which case you can actually sell some of these beginner crops at the general store or at this farm store, which I will show you right here. So if you go right here in Warkmolo and talk to Flora the farmer, she will buy your uh, wheat, potatoes, carrots, beet, and actually pumpkins, that's new. But anyway, you can sell your potatoes here if you really want the cash, but they're only nine coins each, I'd probably just drop them. Uh, do I recommend farming potatoes? Yes, potatoes are actually pretty good. So once you farmed apples up to level four or so, potatoes can be faster. Now at level four, you'll actually advance uh, using those potatoes to level five, and you'll be able to use the iron scythe. So the tutorial scythe you receive, uh, the bronze tutorial scythe is great, and then when you hit level five, you can actually go up to the barn here and grab this iron scythe, which of course I can't pick up because I have my filters off in order to not pick this up. So don't have the filter on, and there we go. Now you have an iron scythe, which you can use at level five, which will increase your farming number and allow you to farm faster. The next crop you unlock is flax. Flax is available here in the flax fields of Orfmolo. You can get these farming gloves, and you need farming gloves in order to farm flax. I wouldn't recommend using this spot because there are bees that you can accidentally hit, and you just left click, right click the flax, and you collect it. Now there is one little trick to flax, and that is that if you get a clickable, you actually want to wait until after you finish farming this piece, because each piece only gives you one flax before you... Oh, well. You want to finish farming the flax before you click the clickable. And the reason is, is that if you do not wait, you'll actually, won't, if you wait, you'll get two flax. If you don't wait, it'll kind of end the ability to get flax. Ah, I need to click one so you can see what I mean. And you just kind of, if you click the clickable while the flax flower is still present. Ah, there we go. Nope. Too late. All right, I can do this, guys. It's, okay, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Come on. I'm gonna make this the longest part of the video for no good reason. I I can't. I can't do this. I just. There we go. No, didn't work. All right. Try one more time. Yes. Yeah, so as you can see, I only got one flax because the clickable kind of depletes the flax flower. So if you are doing flax, uh, you should do that. What can you do with flax? You can take flax to a loom and turn it into a bowstring, which you use to string bows. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I also wouldn't recommend stringing bows as a side note. And I wouldn't recommend farming flax. It's actually quite slow. Um, if you look at the, uh, the Skyblock Isles wiki right now, the number for the amount of XP you get for flax is incorrect. You get less, and it's definitely not worth farming. Next up at level 6, we unlock the ability to farm nettle leaves, which are over in the park of Wharf Molo. There's a lot of them around, find a spot with a few of them, and just farm them with your farming gloves. And you can click the clickables here without any issues. And what you can do with nettle leaves is you can use them to make cheese, uh, and I believe you can also use them to uh, fletch a bamboo blowpipe, but I wouldn't recommend either making cheese or fletching the bamboo blowpipe unless you have some particular reason for doing so. Neither of those is worth the time, in my opinion. Um, as for whether I recommend to farm them, I actually would. I do recommend to farm the nettle leaves. They can be faster than potatoes. So you go from potatoes at level four to nettle leaves at level six. For our next uh, crop, we are back in the pig fields uh, of the Gregor farmer Gregory. And again, you need to do the magic compo compost quest to have these unlocked. So you're just gonna farm the tomatoes and have your sound on for the clickables. And what you can do with tomatoes is you can use them to make pizza. A pizza is a pretty decent food item. It's pretty decent to cook, but you need a pretty high-ish 22 level to make it So uh, for cooking level. So I probably uh, wouldn't uh, make it because there are other ways to level cooking and there's better food items to have that are faster to get. I also would not, uh, I would recommend farming tomatoes if you're interested in purely XP. And I'll review uh, once we get to the level 15 crop, which crops it is that I recommend for XP and which crops I recommend for, you know, having something to do with. At level eight, we unlock carrots, which once again are here in Wharf Molo. And just as before, you just farm them and you make sure to click the clickables. Um, carrots, as I've mentioned before, you can sell to the farmer. I believe you can make carrot juice out of these, but I, I don't really see the point in doing that. And there may be some other recipe that includes carrots, but honestly, I would just drop these or sell them to the farmer. 
um, and just use them until you get to the next crop. At level 10 farming, you'll unlock oranges and oranges are here in the Wharf Molo Park. And again, you won't actually have the fruit picker. So you can just right click these with an empty hand. Or if you wanna you know, stay with the theme, you can right click them with your scythe, but honestly, there's no point. At level 10, you will also unlock the steel scythe. Um, but I would definitely do oranges uh, over carrots. Um, again, because these have a fixed speed, whereas the carrots speed will be dependent on your farming level. And as you have a low farming level, it might be a bit slow. So oranges are a pretty good way to level. Um, you can switch back to carrots. They're, they're pretty close in terms of the XP that you can get. Um, so I do recommend doing oranges and I would recommend either selling them uh, or keeping them to make orange juice later. At level 15, you'll unlock the Rhodonite Scythe. So you should definitely get that. And you will also unlock the ability to farm sugarcane, which is right here by the water altar in Wharf Molo. And you can see the coordinates on the screen as well. Sugarcane is a nice crop because what you can do with it is you can turn it into sugar. And you just to do that, you just go into the mill and you climb up and you use the sugar cane to make sugar. Sugar sells for a pretty decent amount to the baker. So if you're training farming, it's not a bad idea to grab the sugar cane, take it to the mill and take it to the baker to sell. Or you can keep it for baking later. Or alternatively, if you want the fastest possible farming XP, you can always drop it. Now sugar is where things start to get a little bit interesting in terms of farming speed. So um, as you level up, your farming speed will increase. And at this point, I'm such a high level that all of these first row are essentially the same speed for me in terms of farming them because I don't fail the farming. So if you look while we farm the sugar cane, you'll see that with each swing, there's a chance to either get a sugar cane or to not get a sugar cane. So there I missed one, I missed another, a third, and then a fourth I hit. So if you watch again, you'll see miss, hit, miss, 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 hit, hit, and so on. And the point of that is to say that as your farming level increases and as this farming number increases, you'll have a higher chance to hit when you're farming. And when you hit sugarcane, the amount of experience between levels actually starts to matter. And in order to maximize speed, it may or may not be best to always farm the highest crop. Now, if you have similar hit rates and miss rates like me, because you're so high level, then in my case, it is always best to farm the highest crop. But this may not be true, like right when you hit level 15, it might be easier to stick with carrots, for example. So at this point, at level you know, 12 or 13, I would definitely go back to carrots because your speed will increase and they give more XP than oranges. But at level 15, I may or may not switch to sugarcane. You might want to stick with carrots. You can try both and see how they work for you. And you'll actually you know, have enough time between levels to, for this to matter. Um, in these earlier levels, you'll level up so quickly you won't even notice until you hit like 20 or so. So guys, we're here inside the Goblin Village. And I'm going to show you where to find Brubble Grub. It's at this location right here. Um, I so it's really only used for one thing. Now, you, in order to get here, you will need to have the Goblin uh, Village or whatever it's called, the Hollows, Goblin Hollows Unlocked, which can be a little bit difficult, but you know, kind of don't worry about it because honestly, the Brumble Grub is not worth farming at level 18. Um, I, just, I just don't think it's, it's worth the time. It is slower experience. You can cook it right here, which, is, which can be a little bit nice if you're trying to co-train farming and cooking, I suppose. Um, but other than that, it, it, there really is no advantage to it. And you can eat it um, for a pretty okay amount of health. It's nothing particularly exciting. So unless you're specifically co-training farming and cooking, I honestly wouldn't farm the br Brumble Grub. It's not worth the time. So now that we've gotten to the end of our first row, uh, I'm just going to remind you guys, uh, kind of go through what I would farm. So at level one, you, I would farm apples. Uh, at level four, I would start farming potatoes. At level six, I would switch to nettle leaves. Um, at level seven, you can switch to tomatoes, but you might just continue with nettle leaves for a bit. At level eight, I'd keep I'd go with carrots, and then at level fifteen, sugarcane is the way to go. And I probably end up doing sugarcane for a while. Um, you can also kind of go back and forth between carrots and sugarcane and see which one's actually faster for you, depending on your success with both of them. Okay, guys, next up is cocoa beans. 
Here we are starting the second row of the farming items, and this is going to be cocoa beans. Now, besides the fact that cocoa beans are really funny looking and, you know, they look like cocoa beans. Anyway, I really like the way these look. I don't know why. I think because right when I started playing Minecraft, like these had just come out. And so they were the one crop that was like different and exciting. Um, but anyway, so this is south of Pyre. Um, the other location to, for these is actually at the Radiant Sheep place. Um, if you don't know how to get there, there will be a link up at the top where I show you uh, how to get to the Radiant Sheep area, uh, another video that I have. Um, and these are actually, they're, they're pretty quick, um, at least at my level, obviously. Um, the best way to store them is to pop them into this deposit box right here, but that requires the tier three Pyre Adventures, which are rather hard. In fact, I'm not entirely sure they're possible. They might not be. You can travel the Pyre, but if you're going to farm these, I would recommend just dropping them you do have to kind of be careful when you're getting here. Uh, the rogue nixes that are around this area aren't dangerous. Um, or, you know, if you're going to the one that's where the radiant sheep are, it can be a bit of a far run. But here you have the uh, rogue uh, drifters, which are aggressive, and you kind of want to go around this rogue area to get to the cocoa. Um, but you can also just keep farming sugarcane if you want. It's a great money-making method. And the only thing you can do with cocoa, um, for those of you that are interested in co-training skills, uh, is make chocolate. But this requires butter and sugar and cocoa beans, and it really has very little purpose outside of chocolate chip cookie dough and the cherry chocolate cake slices. So it's up to you. Uh, I actually haven't made any chocolate whatsoever because I don't think it's worth the time. But if you really want to, you can obviously feel free to do it. I'd probably stay with sugar and skip cocoa altogether, or I would just drop train to do the cocoa. So we're here in Skygaror at the Viking Hops Field, which is at this location, and there's a good bit of farmers in this area, so I would recommend you bring a weapon here so you can kind of kill them in between uh, farming, and they'll drop, um, you know, farming gloves, some scythes, They'll also drop the sickle mod, which is a good thing to have on a scythe. So I would definitely recommend killing them if you can to get that mod and also to get the farming hat if you don't have one. So here is, uh, here are the Viking hops. Uh, these are in Skygaror, uh, somewhat to the north, south, or west of the uh, city in the fields. Um, Viking hops unlock at level 22 farming. And if you don't want to run for the cocoa beans, uh, this is going to be the next one that unlocks. Now, for these, you have to use shears. And shears will have uh, a lower farming number than the scythe that you have available at this level, which is the level 20 scythe, which, if I remember correctly, would be uh, the rhodonite. Rhodonite scythe. So you'll have the rhodonite scythe, and you'll have the steel shears. And as you can see, the rhodonite height scythe has a higher farming number. Um, so I'm not sure if these are worth farming exactly at uh, level 22. It may be better to stick with the cocoa if, you know, you chose to do the cocoa. Uh, if you chose not to do the cocoa um, and you're still at the sugar cane, you may want to switch to these. They probably will give you more XP or, you know, hop over to cocoa for a little bit before you get to the next item, which is the beet. Uh, and for these, I, I personally would recommend just dropping them or selling them at the general store that's here. Um, alternatively, you can store them and then use them with the beets. There's also some sugar cane here, by the way, if you're interested. Uh, but I would uh, almost definitely recommend dropping them, or you can store them later and use them with the beets. Oh, there's a beet field here, too. That's convenient. Anyway, uh, so you could farm beets here. Uh, the other place is in Wharf Molo, which is where I uh, will show you um, so if you have this deposit box unlocked at Skygore, it may be worth storing the beets and the Viking hops, and you can use them for cooking later. But again, the, the cooking item that you can make with these, um, like other cooking items, isn't really worth the time to make. So I wouldn't recommend it unless you really, really want to like maximize your utilization of all the items that you have. All right, guys, see you at the beets. After Viking hops, you'll come back to Wharf Molo and you'll be farming beets here, just as you did with the crops before. Um, if you really want to stay in Wharf Molo, there's, you know, you don't have to farm all those other crops, but uh, so you'd be farming, you know, sugar cane here for a long time, which isn't a bad way to make money. And then at level um, 
20, uh, 25, you can head over to the beats. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, it, the exact level at which you switch could be dependent on, you know, uh, your preference. But uh, at 25, you unlock the ability to be, do beats and you will go to Warp Mola to use them. So the one thing you can make with beats is you can cook them into the roasted beet, which takes both a beet and a viking hop. Now, if you've been saving your viking hops from uh, when you were farming them before, then this might be worth doing. So you would save the beets as well and then use them in an oven at some point later. But um, I probably wouldn't save, as I mentioned, the viking hops. I would just drop them or sell them. And same with the beets. I'd either drop them or sell them to the farmer that I've shown you before. So here we are at the corn fields. Now the closest corn to storage is actually in Tortuga, but the easiest corn to get to is north of Workmola, which is at this location here. There are two farmers here and you can you know, kill them in hopes of getting a farming hat if you don't have one already. I would recommend actually killing the farmers kind of whenever you see them. Um, and uh, for, for this spot, if you're in Tortuga, um, which you know, if you're level 28 farming, chances are you haven't unlocked Tortuga yet, but um, well, actually, if you're level 28 farming, is the first time you can uh, get the Tortuga Tier 2 Adventures, which is what makes it safe, I believe. Anyway, so if you're in Tortuga, I, I might bank the corn. Uh, the, the use for it is pretty, pretty limited. Um, you can make corn on the cob, which really isn't worth the time it takes to cook, because uh, you need corn and butter, and then you have to cook it on a grill, and it doesn't really give a lot of health. You do need it for an adventure in Tortuga. But I probably wouldn't cook it. I wouldn't bother. I'd just drop train corn if you really want the farming XP. Um, so, you know, you can do it here north of Workmola without any issues. This uh, is what you unlock at level 28. Uh, and you unlock it after beats. And I, you know, again, as before, you may or may not switch over exactly at 28. But it will give more farming XP eventually at what level that exactly becomes true. I'm not sure but you should probably switch over at 28. And here we are back inside the Goblin Village uh, to farm the Bugle Ward. So the Bugle Ward is in the waterfalls. There's one here, there's one further down that way. And these require gloves to farm. Um, what do you do with them? There's not a lot you can do with them, but if you have a Brumble Grub from before, or if you've you know killed a bunch of goblins and have Brumble Grub, I don't know if they drop it. Anyway, um, if you have Bugle Ward and Brumble Grub, you can make something called the goblin uh brew i believe yeah goblin brew yeah so you can make the goblin brew which actually it's not a terrible uh food item but at level 30 cooking you can probably make better food items to be completely honest um and you would have to farm both bugle wart and brumble grub in order to do this so i really don't think this one's worth the time and from an xp perspective it definitely isn't worth the time you're better off farming uh the item before it uh, which is just corn. So you're better off continuing to farm corn than switching to bugle wart. I would just avoid it. So now that hopefully you've followed my guide and have been farming corn for a little while and have completely skipped the bugle wart because it's a waste of time, um, you can farm garlic. So garlic unlocks at level 33, 32. Garlic unlocks at level 32. And it's actually inside of Pyre. So in order to get here, you have to pay the Pyre tribute. Now, garlic is really nice because there's a lot of garlic here. And you can farm it and click on the clickables as before. It looks like potatoes. It's not potatoes. It's all garlic. Um, and you can actually sell it to the garlic merchant that's right here. So this is the, you can also use it for escargot or something stupid. But the best thing to do with the garlic is just to sell it right, sell it right here for 68 coins uh, each. So it's a great way to make some money. And get some farming experience. So at level 33, if you have Pyre unlocked, I would recommend switching to garlic. Otherwise, you can continue farming beets roots, which is what I did when I was level 33. So I'm gonna uh, record this part so you guys remember that you need to hop over this hill to avoid the Gorilla Brutes. If you need a full guide on how to get to bamboo, which is our next farming item, uh, please see the link up above. So if you hop over here to the bamboo and you can farm bamboo at level 35 farming. Now, I personally love bamboo and think it is fantastic. Uh, it is probably one of the most versatile items in the game, in my opinion, and can help you get cooking XP, artisan XP, and fletching XP. So it's, it's kind of really nice. 
Um, that being said, in order to store the bamboo at this point, uh, you need to have a monkey mask. So if you haven't finished the Kogo quest, you can't really store the bamboo. But if you have, you can run past these gorilla brutes here and go inside and either cook the bamboo directly in the cauldron that is in the cook shop, or you can just drop it in the Kogo storage. Um, the other thing that I would highly, 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 highly recommend doing with bamboo because it is the best way to get fletching experience is to turn it into bamboo shoots. So you need level 33 fletching for this and you need a knife or a draw knife. So you just farm your bamboo and you use the knife or draw knife to turn it into bamboo shoots. If you have a giant backpack, you can store the bamboo shoots in there. If you don't, you can take a small backpack and just fill your inventory with these and then either take them to the Kogo storage if you have Kogo, or you can take them to the pyre storage, which is a little farther, but you don't need the monkey mask. So again, you just farm up a lot of bamboo and you're gonna be here for quite a while because these unlock at level 35. And the next thing that unlocks is the uh, volcano hops, which, um, sorry, no, the next thing that unlocks is pyre peppers which are okay. Um, I don't really think they're worth doing because they're not really worth the co-training that, that you can do with them. Uh, in fact, if you, if you really want to co-train those, you can do the uh, cooking, but actually bamboo will give you more cooking experience than the pyre peppers do. So it's really not worth the time to farm fire, pyre peppers. In my opinion, you're much better off farming bamboo because they can give you much more experience with other skills than the pyre peppers can. So I would stay here until level 45 farming when you unlock pumpkins, but of course you can do whatever you want. Um, so I am just gonna show you so you can turn these uh, with fletching and also you can cook the bamboo into bamboo pulp. Um, and then you can use the bamboo pulp actually to get you artisan XP. And it's one of the nicer ways to get artisan XP. If I can find the right spot for it. So you can make bamboo string with bamboo pulp. These all unlock a level 33. And that's it for bamboo. So here we are at the pyre peppers. And unfortunately, I've forgotten my mortar and pestle, but that's what these guys are good for. So you can farm these at level, um, level, level, at level 35 farming. So you unlock bamboo at level 33 and you unlock these guys at level 35. Uh, I honestly don't think they're worth doing. Uh, the only thing you can do with them is to make pyre paste. So you just, it's, it's nice because you just use a mortar and pestle and you can kind of stay here and just uh, farm these, turn them into pyre paste with the mortar and pestle and then just drop the pyre paste. But I honestly would prefer doing bamboo because it's more versatile, it has more uses. And even if you want really want cooking experience, bamboo gives more than pyre peppers for like a tiny bit of running. So I wouldn't farm these, um, but you can farm at a level 35 if you want to, if you want the fastest possible farming experience, and you can always drop to train them as with all the other things. Now you don't actually need to unlock Pyre to get here. Unlike the name Pyre Pepper would suggest, you can kind of hop over from the south, uh, over the hills and over the lava streams to get here. All right, guys, that's it for Pyre Peppers. I'll see you at Pumpkins. At level 45, you'll unlock the ability both to use the, um, the Crimson Scythe. Let me see if I have that right. Hold on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crimson Scythe at level 45 farming. So you definitely want to upgrade. And that's really the first scythe that I would uh, consider modding significantly. You, you should try to put Sickle on Adamantium Plus because Sickle is pretty easy to get from farmers. Um, but uh, the uh, Crimson Scythe might be worth actually modding definitely fully modify your obsidian scythe because you'll be using it for a while. And so we're here in Sky Garor or next to it at the pumpkin field. Um, and the best place to farm pumpkins is probably Tortuga. There's also a small pumpkin patch in the rogue den if you don't want to keep it, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend keeping pumpkins and storing them. This is where the farming backpack comes in handy. Um, I would highly recommend storing the pumpkins because you can use them for pumpkin pie and pumpkin pie is probably the easiest to make and or one of the best food items. So you can either run to the bank that's in this direction or if you have the wharf Mono deposit box unlocked, it's right down 
here, right behind that house, see the little this little spot right here. That's where the wharf mower deposit box is. It's probably the faster way to get from the pumpkins to a deposit box. All right, so at level 45, you'll have these, and you'll be farming pumpkins for a long time uh, because I will recommend that you skip volcanic hops, and I'll tell you why in a sec in a in a second. So now that we've finished pumpkins, I'm going to show you where the volcanic hops are. But again, I don't recommend farming them, and I'll tell you why uh, soon. But since we finished the first row, or the second row, I wanted to give you my recommendations for this second row. So for the second row, I would recommend you do cocoa, just because it's a good jump from sugar cane. Uh, it might take a little bit to run there, but if you just drop train and stay there till you level up a few times, you should be fine. Um, for Viking hops, um, I, I would recommend that you do Viking hops, but they're not like a ton better than Cocos. If you want to just stay at the Cocoa for a little longer, uh, it's, that's fine too. Uh, I do definitely recommend you switch to beetroot um, when you can or when you know the balance is correct between this and the Cocoa or the Viking hops. Uh, corn, same thing. It is a, you know, it's, it's a little faster than beetroot in my test in terms of XP per hour. Um, but if, for whatever reason, you are not succeeding very much with the corn, the beetroot could be better. Uh, Buglewort's not worth it. Don't even bother. Garlic is great if you've unlocked pyre, and it's a you know solid amount of money. It's only a little bit faster than corn, even at my level. So if you want to stick with corn, it's it's fine. Or even stick with beetroot it should be okay. It shouldn't really save you that much time to go up to garlic. Um, Bamboo's the best, uh, in my opinion, the most interesting and fun of the crops, and also it's fantastic for fletching experience. It's the best way in the game to get fletching experience, and I'll tell you all about it some more and gush some, some more about it in the fletching guide I'll make eventually. So this is uh, great XP per hour for farming. It's, you, know, you should definitely switch to bamboo as soon as you can. You should grab your knife and you grab your level 33 fletching. You should go and fletch it, or you can save it for cooking and artisan XP. It's one of the best artisan XP in the game as well. So, you know, it's fantastic. Um, pyre peppers, you can switch to them if you're only going for farming. They give you about like a 10% increase over bamboo in terms of farming XP per hour. At, and that's, you know, at my level 57 farming. So, they may or may not give you that much more over bamboo at whatever level you're at based on, you know, how this hit miss formula works. Pumpkins at level 45, I would definitely switch to because they're great for pumpkin pie and pumpkin pie is one of the greatest foods. Um, and that'll also let you get pretty good cooking experience. But honestly, I currently am farming bamboo and pumpkin kind of over and over again, this for fletching experience, this for the cooking. So you'll probably end up doing both depending on what you want. And they'll both give you solid farming experience. Pumpkin is significantly, significantly more experienced than bamboo per hour for farming though. And in fact, it, at my level, uh, mandrakes and, far, and pumpkins are actually really close in terms of XP per hour. So pumpkins are fantastic for a long time. And now I'm gonna show you volcanic hops. All right, so volcanic hops will require you to build this shortcut, which is gonna be uh, one hammer. So it's part of the volcano quest, but it'll require one hammer, five steel nails, uh, an acacia handle, I think, and like something else. And you'll need some levels to do this. Um, so anyway, you go down the shortcut and you'll be inside the volcano. So you'll actually land in a little spot that has uh, volcano hops. And I'll show you why these are really bad to farm. So first off, they use the shears so you don't get as much of the, the farming number as you would with a scythe. Um, Secondly, they're in kind of small amounts inside these little hidey holes and they take a really long time to respawn. Now, if you're lucky with realm hopping, you can probably, you know, do okay here, but it's kind of not great. And in terms of like XP per hour, even if I managed to do it pretty fast, um, I, I didn't get great XP per hour here. It was actually worse than pumpkin. And that was with like realm switching and like not even timing some of the parts where I was running in between them. So it's really not great. Um, and that you're also going to need to switch patches probably because you just can't realm hop fast enough because you'll you know get rid of the the four plants that are there um, and some of them aren't in safe areas so you will need to like kind of fight mobs to get there so it's a hot mess but there are two there's one at the entrance and one here that are kind of safe and accessible so if you really want to farm volcanic hops for some reason you can and i would just farm the one farm the second realm hop and then farm two and then one and then realm hop and farm one and then two and so on and so forth 
but as I've already mentioned, pumpkins are better experience per hour. I don't think it's worth it um, at all for farming XP. The only thing, I honestly don't even know what you can do with these. Um, let's see if we can find anything here real quick. But as far as I'm aware, there might not be anything that you can use them for at the moment. Uh, use them for volcanic steel, which is nice if you need like anti-fire, like so protection. Um, but otherwise, these guys are pretty useless in my opinion. So don't do it. It's not worth it. So for the last part of this farming guide, I we're here at the, um, what are these guys called? Mandrakes? At the Mandrakes. Um, if you have the earmuffs, you can wear the earmuffs, and these are a lot easier to farm. If you don't have the earmuffs, you can wear a ring of regeneration, and you can have a seer wand uh, with the spell, the vitality spell, linked up. Now, this will have some cost, but it does let you farm here much more easily. I think it's worth it personally. So you just right-click the mandrakes, you make sure you have your sound on for the clickables, and for the lovely screaming noise the mandrakes make, um, or you can just have an eye out for the clickables. Now, what is kind of annoying about these is that every time you take damage, you will stop your farming cycle. So I, I don't know if that stops with the earmuffs, because unfortunately I don't have a pair in order to test with, but um, it may, so that could make it a lot easier to farm here. Nonetheless, it, at level 55 farming, you can farm here, and these guys will give you the most XP of any crop uh, right now. So these are definitely the way to go. At level 70, you will unlock Nether Wart. Uh, I haven't unlocked that yet, but at that point you're basically done with farming, so yeah, that's really it. Um, now what can you do with the mandrakes? You can uh, take them back to storage. Uh, I think there's actually a spot that's a little closer to the Goblin Hollows deposit box if you have that unlocked. If not, the storage isn't too far away, um, and if you have a farming backpack, which I would highly recommend you get if you can, uh, it comes from the pyre chest. Um, it makes it a lot easier to carry things to storage and it's not too far away so it's worth storing these because uh, you can use them to make a cooking item the mandrake tea which requires just one mandrake and one pot and level 55 cooking that actually gives a pretty good amount of experience so I would recommend um, using or keeping these in order to be able to get the cooking experience later. All right, guys, that's it for this farming guide. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe.